All right, it's time for another bad easy solution to discuss mean value theorem. Look at some examples to clarify it. I did my last video on what mean value theorem was and proof of it. Basically, just do a recap uh, of what I showed before. If you have a function like this, let's say x, this is y. If you had a function, uh, let's just go something like this. Just any random function here. Let's call this f of x. And then between an interval of, let's say, if you have this here, this is b between a and if it's differentiable and continuous between a and b like uh, this case right here then the average slope here which is just this one is let's say average slope and this just equals to rise or run f of b minus f of a over b minus a then the mean value theorem says that there if you have a differentiable between these between in an interval then the average slope mean and then you'll have a, a number c that's in between a and b such that at f of x the average slope is uh, is parallel to the average slope so the derivative here let's call this right here so f prime of c is equal to the average slope or just f of b minus f of a over b a and you can see the proof of my other video but basically, now to illustrate this uh, theorem, we'll just do some examples. So example one, it's uh, fx equals x cubed minus x between uh, zero, and x is greater than zero and less than two. Well, it's a polynomial, and as you can see, any number you put in, you're going to get a value, so it means it's continuous, and you can also take the derivative of it anywhere. So basically, this is continuous and differentiable everywhere, but we were concerned about between this, this interval, so this, so we could use mean value theorem. So if we apply the mean value theorem, yes, if we apply it, then uh, what it, this says is that you're going to have a number between 0 and 2, c, such that uh, such that the derivative of it is going to be the average slope, or f of uh, b minus f of a over b minus a. And in this case, this was the interval. This one is actually a now. This is just b, because this is the interval is the farthest one. This is small. So now we just plug this in. So we're going to get this is equal to f of 2 minus f of 0 over uh, 2 minus 0. And in this case here, if we put in a 2 in this, we're just going to get, well, we could just write it over here. f of 2 is equal to, actually, we'll just put it over here. Yeah, so this one here, we're just going to get, this is 2 cubed minus uh, yeah, 2 uh, minus, uh, this one's just 0 f of 0, uh, this is 0 minus 0, and divided by all 2. So then this simplifies 2, this is 8 minus 2 over 2 is equal to 6 over 2, this just equals to 3. So the derivative is, uh, is 3 here, so we got, there's a number c between 0 and, and 2, such that the derivative is 3, which is the average slope. So now if we just take the derivative here, we're just going to get f of x is equal to, well, the derivative of this one is just 3x squared minus 1. 3x squared using power rule, minus 1. And now if we just plug in, uh, make it equal to 0, so then f of c is equal to, well, yeah, 3 is equal to 3c squared minus 1. Solve for c, we get uh, this, yeah, we get here, shift this over here, we get 4 equals 3c squared. Simplified further, we get 4 over 3 equals c squared. Square root both sides. It's going to be number plus or minus. Yeah, this is plus or minus because this could be a negative or positive. It's going to be squared anyway. So we get here, we get c is equal to plus or minus... Um, so square root of 4 over 3, or just 2 over square root 3, the square root of the top. But uh, yeah, th we're not looking at the ones outside the intervals, so this is the negative. We just apply only the positive here. So then c is equal to 2 over root 3. And as it yeah, so now if we just uh, plug this into the calculator here, we get here, yeah, actually I already have it here, 2 divided by square root 3 is 1.1547. As you can see, is less than... Uh, is less than 2 and greater than 0, so it's in between there. If we plug this into f of c is equal to c cubed minus uh, c, this just would equal to, well, we could just uh, do this one here. Q 
cubed minus, well, 2 divided by square root 3. And then this is uh, right there. So this equals to 0 0.03849. Yeah, so I just wrote it down here. So what I'm doing this for is uh, you could, I just want to draw the equation of the line here. So if we have y equals mx plus b, where we know m is equal to 3, the average slope, then if we plug in these values here, we get point, because we know that, uh, we know one point of it is just uh, c and f of c is on the line. So here's equal to 3x, yeah, this is C actually. Yeah, that's C there minus, I mean, this plus B. So then B would just equal to, well, it's uh, 0.3849. Yeah, minus 3 times this. And if we just plug it into the calculator here, so 0.3849. And it, yeah, it just equals to, uh, so B is equal to negative 3.0792. Okay, let's just write it down here. Then we get our equation of a line y equals to 3x plus, or just minus, minus 3.0792. So if we were to graph this one out, uh, then we're just going to graph them both out here. So we're going to go right here. Let's just graph it out. We'll just, um, so we got x cubed minus x is that one, and we have this one as 3 times x minus, what was it, yeah, 3.0792. Let's write uh, from, it says, uh, 0 to 2. So yeah, it just graphs it from 0 all the way to 2 here. I'll just uh, change this into that. Yeah, as you can see from here, there's the, uh, this is the, that slope tangent line we have here. It should be the average of it looks like it's parallel here. We can actually just write that equation right now for the other line. So if we draw the average slope line, we know y equals mx plus b. The average slope is 3 as well. And then again, this is m equals 3. And we pick a point. We know that at x equals 0, well, f of, yeah, f of 0 is equal to 0. So there's our point right there for this one. So we just get here. Uh, we have y is equal to, well, this one's just going to be 3x. That's just our equation there. So if we graph this one out here, let's just keep writing this. Google's pretty amazing here. Uh, 3 times x. So right here. Yeah, so as you can see here from 0 and 2, this is parallel. So this, this slope here is parallel to the average slope, which is 0, and there's 2 right there. So this is pretty, that's basically the mean value theorem, is, is saying that there's the average slope here, you're going to have a number C, which is around here, 1.15 or something like that, and it's average, the slope is average to that one, the same as the average slope. Okay, let's do another example here. This example is more of an illustration here, let's say you have, uh, let's say if you had a car, yeah, so if you have a car traveled 180 kilometers uh, in two hours, then then all the mean value theorem is saying is that you're going to have have to have at once travel let's say at once travel at 90 kilometers an hour which is the average slope here because this is just 8 180 divided by 2 that's just equals to 90 kilometers per hour average so that basically basically all the mean value theorem is it's uh, yes yeah, so it's saying there's a, at least one point where you actually travel the average speed what uh, well, yeah, that's uh, all for today. Hopefully, uh, basically, you learned about mean value theorem uh, through that example above. But basically, yeah, you could just uh, also interpret the mean value theorem as saying, if uh, if this is the if this is the in instantaneous uh, velocity is always changing, as you're always going to be running different speeds, but then there's going to be at least one time where you travel the average speed, and this is uh, pretty useful to know. Hopefully, you learned and um, stay tuned for another math easy solution.